Good morning, plant friends. Green Goddess Botanic here to do another video. I'm coming at you from a rainy Portland day. But okay, <laughs> I just got a really exciting package in the mail and I have to open it up and I wanted to open it up with you. Um, this has come all the way from Thailand and it is on its seventh day of coming to me, of, of shipment. So I'm really nervous to open it up. Um, it was in customs for a few days um, in LA. So, you know, it, it is quite damaged. The box is really uh, torn up a little bit. So I'm excited to get in here and see what the condition of the plant is and if I can bring it back. Um, and hopefully it's in good condition. I've been in contact with the seller and they've been really awesome. So wish me luck. All right, everybody, here we are. So as you can see, said package um, has the uh, certificate here. Um, it has been opened by the U.S. border. Um, and, you know, it obviously says fragile, handle with care, do not throw. Um, the box has been pretty damaged over here. So let's crack into this baby and see. Now this is the first plant I've ever ordered from Thailand. funny after I ordered this plant I spent a good deal of time watching other plant tubers hauls from Thailand to see their success and I know that each uh, I know that each experience can, can differ so um, I'm just hoping that my experience is just as good oh they included a heat pot right here. I do not know what this is. <laughs> That's cute. I don't know why they... Oh, it's a pot, I think. Is it a pot? I don't know, but it's cool. It's a little cute pouch. I like that. It's a little strawberry pouch. Okay. Now big okay. Oh my god, I think we might be okay. on a regular basis, order these these plants from other parts of the world. Oh, I don't know. Oh, wow. It's a variegated fiddle leaf fig tree, a variegated ficus lorata. Um, I do see some mealybugs, I think. I'm gonna go grab my alcohol really quick. Oh my gosh, it looks a little worse for wear. It did ship bare root. I'm trying to see if I see any more mealies or if that's just powder. You know how mealy bugs really, they're pretty distinguishable. Um, all right, so. Take a look at these roots. Oh my god, we are so lucky. The, the root system is still intact. Looks pretty good. Oh wow. It's so good. I can't believe this is my first time I've ever seen one in real life. It's so beautiful. Except I'm pretty sure that it has mealy bugs. Right here. 
kind of hard to see. See that little white splotch right there? Pretty sure that's Mealy's. So, um, I'm going to go grab my alcohol and a cotton swab and get in there and see, um, see if I can remove that. Oh yeah, it's got a new growth point. Okay, I'll be right back. All right guys, so I have my alcohol here and some cotton swabs and I'm just going to, you know, actually before I do this, I'm going to just quickly rinse off the plant in my sink. Okay, I just rinsed it off in my sink with some lightly warm water. You know, we still have some serious elasticity with the leaves here. So that is so good. That is so good. Okay, so upon further investigation after taking this under my sink, it is most definitely mealies. So I'm gonna take the next step here with the alcohol. Try not to get it on the leaves. I'm just gonna take these off like so. Use this other one. I think that uh, I'm obviously pretty surprised that the, the plant made it alive. I've just read so many bad reviews about how shipping from across the world can really be hard on plants. And I mean, ficus are definitely. Uh, a sensitive plant if you just saw my last video um, you'll understand that I have a little bit of an obsession with ficus and especially the fiddle leaf fig God, look at the variegation on these leaves are you seeing that holy cremoli oh my god I might be the only person in Portland with a variegated fiddle leaf fig I mean let's just hope it survives it has come to me in pretty amazing condition now what i'm going to do next is i'm going to pot this up in a super super airy soil and i'm going to give it a, a very small terracotta pot i just have to find the right one ah look at that that was so easy tiny tiny pot look at this root ball it's pretty small i mean it's very well established but it's also small so I don't want to stress this plant out by giving it a giant pot. The roots will be swimming in this soggy dirt. That is not the goal with ficus. Definitely get it in a tight little comfortable space so it can acclimate and get nice and cozy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill the pot with orchid bark like I normally do. All right, so the bottom of the terracotta pot is now filled with orchid bark. I'm going to put the fiddle leaf fig tree right inside of it, just like that. So I'm gonna do mostly orchid bark in here, the tiniest bit of soil, because I want this to be very, very airy. Oh my God, it's here and it's standing up and it's okay. So now that I have Mr. Fiddle Leaf Fig all potted up, I'm gonna give him some plant food and I'm going to do some watering. So um, just to make sure that he is happy and acclimated, um, I have that specific ficus lyrata plant food. So I'm going to probably use a tiny bit of that mixed with some newt because I did just receive some newt in the mail a couple days ago. I posted about it on Instagram and it's supposed to have really amazing benefits for your plants. So. Um, Come on inside with me and we'll do some watering. Hey, here I am. I've got some distilled water. I've got my newt. I've got my fiddle leaf fig food. I've got a container to mix all of it in. And I've got my plant and a bowl to catch the water. I'm gonna give it some fresh distilled water. Now I don't always do distilled water for my fiddle leaf figs, but because we are so, fresh and brand new and we just traveled a great distance 
I'm going to treat it to a nice big drink of distilled water. I'm just going to thoroughly drench. Now the bowl underneath it is catching all the excess. You can see here that the water is running really thoroughly out the bottom of the plant. So currently I have two grow lights going in my house right now. I have a bright white one over here that I have with my Monstera, my Ficus triangularis, and with my Anthurium clearinervium. This one kind of provides some really bright light to my Hoyas as well, and just generally my south facing window. The sunshine is blocked by the house next door for the most part of the day. So I like having this grow light as an option. It's just in my regular floor lamp over there. And then I have another grow light in my west facing window. Because I have my humidifier over in this neck of the woods, I probably will put it over here just because I want it to feel humid and warm and taken care of. Usually I have my pink princess sitting right here on top of my humidifier. It is right here. It's doing really well. It got real thirsty there for a second because I was holding off on watering all of my plants because I was waiting for that shipment of the new plant food before I watered again. Uh, but yeah, it's doing great now. The leaves have filled back out and it got a nice big drink. The plants love the, this humidifier. As you can tell, I have quite a few plants bundled around it. I am a Calathea lover as well as a ficus lover and I feel like this humidifier just does an amazing job. So what I decided to do is I'm going to baby the heck out of this plant. In the daytime, I'm going to leave it on top of the humidifier to get some natural light from the window and to absorb that humidity. And then at night, I'm gonna keep my Easy Bright grow light on over here. I'm gonna move my Chia Pence and maybe my Wars Wishii out of the way. And I'm gonna let it sit on top here so that it can soak up those rays all day and all night. Now I'm not gonna do this forever, but just to help it acclimate, I know that this is the best course of action. <laughs> oh my God, it looks so cute. All right, the little fiddle is here next to the humidifier. It is being sheltered by Mama Fiddle over here. As you can see, there is some pretty significant leaf damage. I think that overall it has come to me in pretty decent condition. And now all we can do is wait. So I'm going to let it sit here with the humidifier in the ambient lighting of the day. And then as we approach the evening time, I'm going to move it up here under my grow light. Now, it's not really intended to be an update on my Monstera, but you might have seen my repotting of the Monstera that I did. My Monstera had contracted thrips last autumn and it's really coming back as you can tell a lot of the leaves have kind of reverted back to the immaturity but I do have some leaves here that are still looking pretty good that's been living under the grow light too